talking about hot spots. Hot spots in the feet. Yeah, yeah. foot issues, especially foot hot issues, spots. Foot issues, just feet, just feet. Just and yeah. Set that in there because yeah. you want to have access to those. Okay. Um, Hi, my name's Dougie. I am the founder and lead bike fitter at Edinburgh Bike Fitting. And again, I'm sitting here with Curtis Cramblet of Revolution in Fitness. Yep. And today we're, I guess we're talking about issues within the foot um, or on the foot or around the foot yeah. um, on the bike. And uh, yeah, we've just got a couple of things that we're going to go over and maybe some maybe go over a couple of problems that we tend to see in the studio and some of the solutions that we try and apply. How common um, would you say um, you see people with foot issues being one of their chief complaints? It's not, it's not, it's, it, I, I, I tend to find that it's another thing. Yes. It's sometimes, thing, it's very it rarely be. the driver. I mean, sometimes I can think of maybe five or six emails off the top of my head that I've read over the years that are like the main reason someone's having a big problem with their yeah, feet yeah. and they just can't solve it no matter what. Um, but I would say it's definitely something that's brought up a lot, yes. but it's very rarely the main thing. Totally. And that's exactly what I would say as well. And I've had a guy uh, literally come in, not only on a flat pedal, but a pedal he made himself from wood. <laughs> and the pedal is quite literally this big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I swear to God, it was a pedal made of wood and that's what gave him d comfort, relatively speaking. Yeah, I've seen some crazy things in my day. <laughs> yeah. So um, with that, and I would agree that the hot spots is usually what people talk about. Yeah. Um, there's these little nerves, um, there's these little nerves that run between these bones and frequently those nerves get compressed uh, or as the foot falls down, uh, thank you. Uh, or as the, the foot falls down, there can be a lot of friction in here, but those nerves, those metatarsal nerves can get quite irritated. Also, you can end up with a lot of blood flow issues in, in the foot. If there's mm. not good blood flow return, or if there's constant pressure on the pedal, um, then that can start to cause a lot of burning because nerves in the rest of the muscles really like oxygen. Mm -hmm. um, so what are the um, common things you're fixing in order to try to, or changing in order to try to get rid of those hot spots? So the, f the first First thing I would say, just even based on what you've said there, so if you think about the anatomy of the blood vessels and the and the nerves that go, they're kind of protected by the metatarsals yes. in your feet. Yeah. And so if you're scrunching your toes to get the, you know, if you're scrunching your toes inside the shoe, you're essentially scrunching up those nerves and those blood supply as well. So yes. then you're sort of exacerbating numbness and blood flow issues to the to the toes just by having those feet scrunched. So mm. and it, and I think so. Then if if your technique is bad and you're either pushing violently down on the pedal yeah. and you're not striving for a finding the ball of your foot and yeah. sweep through yeah. um, technique um, or your cleat is all the way forward, right. that's a couple of super basic things. I can have someone feeling completely different things in their feet just by the way that they're pedaling and their conscious technique. Absolutely. Um, and that's before we even get to foot support or, you know, the finer details of where your cleat is or what shoe you're wearing. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so many people, and it's not like you're going to produce a lot of power or for that matter, any power in the back of a pedal stroke, but some people are still pushing down at the very bottom or the back. I think because it's intuitive. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, like yeah. You, you're, you don't think that you're in a circle, even yeah. though it would make sense. Yeah, yeah. You, you, a lot of, I, I still find people that have been cycling for years that still just push down. Yeah, and at the bottom of the pedal stroke, if you if your crank arm is at the bottom and you're still pushing down, you're not moving it forward. It's yeah. not that you have to really actively or violently pull back or up, but you've got to unload, you've got to start to think about pulling your foot to the top of that shoe just so to allow some through, vascularity yeah. to pull through at the bottom a little bit and then lift up coming in the back. Otherwise, you've got a constant pressure between your foot and the bottom of the shoe. There's been a lot of push these days. Don't pull up in the back. Well, you're not going to produce power, but you can improve blood flow by unweighting the foot inside the shoe at the back of the pedal stroke. So conscious ways you pedal makes a big difference. And yeah, I would agree with the, that. Yeah, the way I, I have a lot of success with just telling people to think about finding their upper hamstring or glute yeah, yeah. on the ball of their foot yeah. through the bottom of the pedal stroke yeah you think about that I find a lot of people I like I think a lot of people I, I hear an instantaneous sometimes improvement of the sound coming off the turbo trainer just yeah, by saying that a little smoother yeah and I like to think about pulling your heel uh, into like, the back of the shoe coming yeah. through the bottom scraping mud off and then thinking about pulling your foot up into the top of the shoe as you come up the back it gives yeah. them a feedback of where their foot is hitting the shoe um, and to tell them they're doing it right so pedaling mechanics number one though, and I think you made a really nice uh, note there about the position of the cleat the relative to the side. Yeah. yeah, go there for me. 
Well, I, I, for me, I, I tend to find a lot of people have their cleats really far forward, yeah. and that's um, and that's sometimes the shoe manufacturer has got the cleat holes way too far forward. Yeah, totally. So even having the cleat all the way back sometimes isn't all the way back enough. Exactly. And this is another point, if you tend to size up your shoes to somehow give your feet more space to move into, again, those cleat holes are then further forward again, so yes. then, then, then you're going to almost never get the cleat far enough back in some cases. Um, that, that's for me, and I, and I tend to find if you're struggling to find the ball of your foot, right. um, like again, moving that cleat slightly further back can help you. And the main reason it helps you is because it mo all of a sudden there's less of a lever on your foot, yes. and so it's more stable. Yes. So all of a sudden you can f find, if you like, the, yeah. the ball because um, there's less movement inside the shoe just because your heel's not dropping so quickly. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot, of the, a lot of these wedges, insoles and all this support and having a nice shoe, just it, all you're doing is making that foot more stable. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden your body's not keeping that foot from moving because right. it doesn't need to. Exactly. It's, it's still inside that shoe like it should be. Um, and I think that if we can go into detail maybe with like why is a wide shoe important? Why is a fore aft cleat position important? Why is having your ankle supported potentially with a set of insoles or with other means yeah. um, so important in a cycling shoe? Um, could, you know, because a lot of people a lot of the time don't think they need that because well, I don't need it when I'm walking around, so why do I need it on the bike? Yeah. But maybe you could go into a little bit more detail there. So as I look at the, um, the most common reason people have foot issues is it's all about the shoe. Yeah. Uh, and I've got a, a lake in my hand, but the truth is the good news is that more and more shoemakers, especially um, that are recognizing the US market has a wider foot than European market. You know, we just Even have- the British market. Yeah, there you go, fair enough. Uh, we have, uh, I, my foot's a, almost a triple E. And so making sure that you know the width of your foot, it's like the width of your sit bones. You need to know the width of your foot yeah. and does the insert and does the, the base of the shoe match the width of your foot. So if I put a double E inside of this shoe, then my foot is going to be supported on the base of that shoe. If this shoe was an A and my foot is an E, my foot's going to fall over the base of the shoe. Yeah. And so when my foot isn't supported by the base, then what happens is the upper starts to squish my foot, a la squish yeah. those nerves. Um, and so a simple thing that you can do is if you put your foot on a piece of paper, you outline your foot. Uh, and so now you have a picture of your foot and then you drop the insole onto that picture of your foot. And if your foot is wider than that picture, if your foot's hanging outside of the outline of your shoe, then you know that your foot is wider than the base of the shoe. So it's a really simple test, mm. uh, but making sure that your foot is supported by the base is just the most important thing for yeah. me. Um, and then of course, um, the length of the shoe, most people get that correctly, but many people don't get the upper correct. Uh, many uppers just are too short for people's high arched feet or they go ratcheting these bloody things down thinking the more you squish the foot, the more stable it is and the happier the foot's going to be. Yeah. And the truth is it just plants that foot down into the base and then they end up with more issues. So yeah. an upper that's appropriate and a width that's appropriate. And then finally you mentioned there a moment ago is what do you do once you get the right shoe? Um, when you're walking, your foot needs to be able to pronate efficiency, efficiently, to be able to flatten out, to absorb the shock from the ground, and then supinate to be able to push off. Um, that translates into a lot of good mechanics to the body. But when you're cycling, the foot is supposed to stay mostly in an arched position. There's still a little bit of pronation, supination that happens. But for the most part, we stay relatively um, stable and arch up. Um, so having something, whether it be a super feed or a track or a specialized, something off the shelf um, to be able to give that arch a little bit of support is going to keep more pressure on the arch, this longitudinal arch, and keep some of the pressure off of the metatarsal head. Um, also, some of these that you can do custom or non-custom have a bump in the middle of the arch. Something go from side to side to support the transverse arch and then that, thank you. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Being able to support the transverse arch and not just the longitudinal arch keeps pressure off of those metatarsal heads and thus off of the nerves. So um, rarely do I see someone that's better without anything inside of their shoe. Yeah, no, I, I would agree there as well. And, and I think that it's... Um it's difficult because I, you know, 
the nature of this conversation. We can't really show through people lots of examples. Yeah. But like um, one of the things that you showed me just the other day was, um, you know, really how much media lateral movement there can be yeah. when you're pushing down in, in a pedal yeah. stroke. And then like if you think that, you know, you've only really got a couple of degrees worth of float in your cleat, mm -hmm. that movement's got to go somewhere. Yeah. So that movement goes into your knee by your knee flicking out. Yes. And if it's not going into the knee because your knee's reached its limit, then yeah, it's yeah. going into the saddle. It's creating saddle sores. Yeah. It's creating, you know, lack of efficiency. It's creating, um, you know, Back all pain. sorts of yeah. other issues. Yeah. And, and this is all just from, you know, your foot inside the shoe. So, you yeah. know, you can have, you know, you could have a sore neck or a sore back. You know, I think, you know, you, you told me once about um, a triathlete that was having terrible back pain. Yes. All from not having the right, you know, was it not the right cleat position or they yeah. weren't quite finding the ball, their foot enough inside their shoe and yeah, it just, exactly. just all led up. And so uh, without waffling on too much, I, I, I think that, yeah, you, you'd be surprised as to, the, as to the craziness that can happen in a bike fit. Yeah. This interconnected or the problems change. you can solve just from getting the foot position right. And yeah. I think it's so important to stress that. It's truly foundational. Yeah. I mean, it's by definition foundational. And yeah. whatever foundation we sit on, good or bad, will affect the rest of the system above mm. it. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Yeah. And I think, yeah, that's a nice place to... Agree. ...to stop there. Perfect. Sweet. Um, that was nice. Back to the shorts. Curse.